mastery, a place of effortless proficiency. They say that it takes 10,000 hours to master something. And from my experience, I've found that to be true. I'm a master of swordplay. I've been practicing European martial arts for more than 20 years. And these are arts that include things like the long thrusting rapier, the powerful two-handed sword of the knight, swords and shields, spears, wrestling, knives, and combat in full suits of armor. These are arts that were practiced on battlefields, on dueling grounds, and tournament grounds. They're violent arts. They were designed to defeat their opponents. In this tradition, mastery was the difference between life and death. But I'm not here to get you to take up sword fighting. I see here some sighs of relief. Nor am I here to advocate some medieval form of conflict resolution. <laughs> I'm here to bring you on my journey of physical mastery. I believe there's no, more journey, no journey that is more profound than the one that you take with your entire body. Through learning to master a physical skill, it teaches you to be disciplined, strong, resilient, and perhaps most important of all, vulnerable. It is an incredibly vulnerable thing to do the equivalent of learning to walk all over again. But it's this journey through vulnerability where we learn how strong we really are. Now, when I was eight, I was already five foot two. So I was ahead above everybody else in my class. And I was all arms and legs, kind of like I am now. And I felt awkward and, and strange in my body. And I didn't know where my limbs were. And I was really sensitive. And I felt in sports like I was just knocked down all the time by the kids who are better and faster players than me. And I felt knocked down inside by teachers who were looking for talented kids to be part of after school teams. So by the time I was 12, I'd learned that if you're not good at sports and you've got a reasonable brain, you're an academic, not an athlete. And I was smart. I loved computers. I loved learning. I helped the athletes with their homework, and I tucked myself under a desk in my classroom, Montessori school, and there I would read adventure novels like Zorro and the Three Musketeers. But as a result of this, I never developed the resiliency, mental, physical, or emotional, that kids get from sports, and I, I didn't have any physical confidence. That was until I discovered a whole new world of movement. In an underground parking lot near where I was growing up, there was a club of people rediscovering the martial arts of Europe. Nations like Spain, Italy, France, and Germany, they had martial arts 600 years ago. These were sophisticated systems of self-defense that took years to master. They included movement, attack, defense, deception, strategy, and they had positions with fanciful names like the Falcon, the boar's tooth, the long tail. It was like something out of an adventure novel. <laughs> but in an underground parking lot, I have to tell you, it was a little bit more Mad Max than it was <laughs> Musketeers. <laughs> These arts, they were written down in ancient books. They were written by masters. And they were practiced, and they included important basis in geometry, mathematics, timing. They were practiced by European soldiers on battlefields, by nobles on misty greens in early morning light, settling affairs of personal honor. <laughs> it was part adventure, part academic, part athletic. Now, when I started, it was all rather awkward. <laughs> and <laughs> we wear protective gear when we do this, so uh, we can get hit. And I got hit a lot. <laughs> And as you can see, <laughs> and every demon of being not good enough and not coordinated enough and not strong enough was there. And I, my image of myself as an academic and not an athlete was being challenged. But it didn't matter then whether I was good at this or not. I was enthralled. I was doing something that exercised my mind and my body. It was about brains, not brawn. It was about position, not strength. I just wanted to have a sword in my hand to learn how to fence, and I finally wanted to move and be in my body. 
I found now when I got knocked down, I got back up again. And when I got hit, especially when it was done well, it was fun. <laughs> Once my mind and my body were activated together, I gained more confidence in myself. And I started to feel more energized and happier. I pushed through those fears. I broke out of the template that I'd imprisoned myself in. And I started practicing every day. And 20 years later, I still practice every day. <laughs> Saluto. En guardia. Ah, boy. Now people say to me, I bet you wish you were born 500 years ago. <laughs> However, that couldn't be farther from the truth. I far prefer living now when I don't have to slay my friends. Thank you very much, Matthias. I'm also rather fond of uh, indoor toilets, electricity, the internet. I hadn't realized how essential movement was until I really connected with it, or how central it was to how I felt about myself. There's a deep and powerful connection that you get with yourself and with the world when you feel like your body works with you, and you work with it. Through this connection, I have gotten through depression, I've recovered from significant illness, and I've come to feel strong. Sexy <laughs> and capable. I believe anyone can master movement and that in fact it is vital to do so. There is no template you have to follow for becoming capable in movement. And there's no requisite baseline of talent. I've met people and practiced with them who are as young as eight and as old as 78 who were just starting on their journey. I've crossed swords with the man who had advanced MS and a woman who couldn't see, and they were both masters of their arts. If we can only let go of the myth that talent is required to be good at something, that you need to be good right away, or that learning should be like a two-minute training montage in a movie, then a whole new world of possibilities opens up to us. I can think of so many kinds of movement that I could love if I only let myself suck at them. Mastery, it is not a destination. It's a way of being. It's a choice to strive, face challenges, and know your own vulnerability. Through the journey of physical mastery on the outside, we profoundly change on the inside. Thank you. <laughs>